And what was, when we, we remember, anybody remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? What was the challenge? What happened there? Yeah, well, both of these were twins. I mean, she saw, she saw a sign and a serpent with us, uh, the forbidden fruit speaking. And uh, he promised her gnosis, knowledge, a higher level of um, understanding. Absolutely. So they were twinned, as you rightly put it. Let's go there and, and look at it and look at the foundation that that laid for us in the world today. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, we're reading from 1 down to 6 or 7. Let's go down to 7. 1 to 7. May we have a reader, please? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Amen. So we see, again, the twinning. We see the sign. Something miraculous. Something out of the ordinary. And then we see what the knowledge comes in, or the wisdom. What did the serpent say to her? Where, where, is, where is it? Let me see. You shall not surely die. Not even that far. It says, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as what? Gods. Gods. Knowing good and evil. So, so there, there's a lot that we can talk. Anybody want to make any comments on this before we move forward? But sir, was there a need to be God? There, was, there, there will never be a need to be God because God already exists. There you go. And he's not presenting her with God. Yeah. But Elder, he didn't find it strange that a snake was speaking. <laughs> that was the fascinating part. True. That's, that's what she found fascinating. And instead of leaving, she allowed her curiosity to get her, to allow her to be sucked in. Her brother got in. Yes, Sister Debbie. <clears throat> Pardon. Long time in two. If you if you was created by the king and you spend so much time in God's presence every day, why would you want to be like God? Because you already you already you already spend time in his presence every day. At that point, exactly. Every day you, every day you see in God. Every day you see <laughs> him. You, you see how he is. You see what he's giving you. He given you. He he give you everything. You had everything. What more you wanted? I don't never give her a better name. We we we're, we're not gonna rationalize it. Um, unfortunately, but Adam named her Woe, and it is so. Let's go. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment here. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Elder. Um, the tree, so the tree of knowledge, it's it, they already had knowledge of good. All right. But now they had knowledge of both good and evil. So the tree, so you have this false knowledge in the world. I was reading somewhere in um Spirit of Prophecy, and she said that the tree of knowledge 
is is from where Satan's desk is. So from that desk, he speaks, and that desk can be anywhere. Universities that you know teach another way, churches, anywhere. But the tree of life is different. It's, it's heavenly, and to access it is a different kind of mindset. So she here became a, a student um, because she just accepted what the tree, what the serpent who was the, you know, he was teaching from his tree, which is a tree of knowledge. So, I mean, knowledge, knowledge can be a bad thing if, if it doesn't have the right foundation, I guess. Amen. Amen. I see the, the hand raised, genus. There's no mic connected to this one, so I don't. I'm not, I'm not even sure how, how that normally. Yeah, man. Whenever you see the hand, it's just, just tell me, tell me, you acknowledge it and I'll connect. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I reckon yeah. you have a different device then. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how, back to the whole serpent thing, um, talking to Eve. How we know said so the animals back then they couldn't talk? Remember, say everything did perfect before, you know? So how we know said so them couldn't talk? When, when you read Christ triumphant and hear the description, if, the, if it were, if it, if it were not, if it were the norm, it wouldn't have been a big deal to eat. So it was not the norm when you read it. Ella. Yes, sir. Abhi Sabbath. And what is good too, there is nowhere prior to this that you find conversations between man an animal. And you he, saw where Adam named names or named the animals and whatever God called them. Um, that was the name thereof. But you never find a conversation between man and animal. Um, and, and neither after that. that. Not, not yeah. before and neither after. But we do find it fascinating to watch the cartoons and seeing that <laughs> man and um, these animals communicate and these animals can give speech. There is one one that we use, and that is a cat to say happy Sabbath and all of these things. I don't know if you have seen that one before. I've seen. I've <laughs> so, seen. nonetheless, it's um, saying, it's to be, Elder. Yes, yes. So, so nonetheless, to be to be on the the, the sea side and where Scripture is concerned, we have we have not seen a precedence in the Bible prior to this. Not even, I, and I don't remember seeing any after that. I want to say something after everybody else is true on this tour. I just, just start out putting something on that. All right. Go, go. Any, anybody else want to? Wanna, wanna... Mom, um, what happened to the donkey? Yes, yes. You're not correct, sir. So, yeah, I mean, oh, I get what yes. you're saying, Ashel, um, Elder yes. Gordon. Um, but there has to be a starting point. So even if you, you yes. never see an instance in the Bible that, that um, refers to an animal speaking, there has to be a point of initiation where you don't have the introduction of that happening. And then now we have another instance afterwards, which is, somebody said it in the comments, um, the incident of the donkey speaking donkey. or prophesying. Um, sir. Yes, go ahead. The, the question was asked, uh, what, what more could... Um, Eve have wanted um, but I, I think um, we should not fail to recognize um, what happened in heaven um, mm -hmm. yes he said that he wanted to I mean ascend to the side of the north so it appears to me that within his creation he has given free choice and they are all they always still have the ability to choose and to make choices and eve chose to make that choice she let's not choice. take that from her if it was otherwise um we would probably be accusing god of making us into stooges and, and robots and robots so the truth of the matter is that she had a choice in the matter and she was able to choose. We are told from inspiration that this rebellion was also taken to other worlds. And those people from those other worlds rejected the choice to rebel. 
Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point here. Um, we can go and find it in in Christ triumphant. I know I've read it in 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 in, in that in that book. The, the, the two issues that we're talking about here, the one with Balaam's donkey, that was not a natural uh, phenomenon. That was not natural. And the one with, 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 with the serpent talking here, that too was the act of the enemy, that was the act of Satan. So these two that we're talking about, the two examples that we cite are not natural phenomena. They're not things that naturally happen. They were out of the, 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 the order. It was, these are, are not things that naturally happen. So we have to ensure that we, when we're reading, we, we keep, or keep that in mind. These are not natural occurrences. They were supernaturally inspired. Both, both instances were supernaturally inspired. All right? Perfect. Right, so but let's go and let's zero in on verse. Well, we, there's so much that we can dig into because in verse three, Eve talks about not even to touch it, which, which that was not the original instruction. But in verse four, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye, she added, she added, right? She added to the word of God. In verse four it says, ye shall not surely die. What does that mean? And what, what are the implications of that statement? Let's, let's look into that. You know, in the book, Desire of Ages, this is what uses this term called a covert negative. Um, and you can, you, you can always see Satan using this method. When he came to Jesus, he said, if. So the co covert negative is insinuation without saying it plainly. So he said, if you be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. So the covert negative is that you're not the son of God. And probably that's why you can't. You know, when he came to he, Eve here, he said, you, not surely, not really. It's like when somebody asks you a, a plain, settled question, and they say, "You're really you sure about that?" You know, it it, it, it involves really mask, kind of, mask doubt. Yes, that's how he works. He doesn't come directly and say, "God is a liar. God is wicked." No, you know, not really, not surely, not insinuating negatives in the in the mind. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to want to comment on this one? Is that that's mask doubt? Yep, mask doubt or concealed doubt. All right, Ellen Nelson had said he wanted to share something, so I'll have him share before I move on. No, go ahead, go ahead. Change your mind. Yeah, um, it would be slightly off track. All right, cool. No worries. No worries. So I would I would appreciate a reader for this for me, please. The only one who promised Adam life in disobedience was the great deceiver. And the declaration of the serpent to Eve and Eden, he shall not surely die, was the first sermon ever preached upon the immortality of the soul. Yet this declaration resting solely upon the authority of Satan is echoed from the pulpits of Christendom and is received by the majority of mankind as readily as it was received by our first parents. The divine sentence, the soul that sinned, it shall die, Ezekiel 18.20, is made to mean the soul that sinned, it shall not die, but live eternally. We cannot but wonder at the strange infatuation which renders men so credulous concerning the words of Satan and so unbelieving in regard to the words of God. So we realize that this was all about doubt, as you rightly said. Mm -hmm. It was all about doubt. Mm -hmm. It was bringing doubt into the picture. But what we see here is a new concept, the immortality of the soul. And there's a lot that, that we can talk about where the immortality of the soul is concerned. Because this here is, a, is we hear this all the time. 
anybody well, I'm from Portland, man. We hear some stuff down there. I don't know if you hear it that you know, like put put on black or red when you have a, per, a, a family member that died. Anybody ever heard anything like that? Yep. Who's who's oh, that? Yeah. The All next the Portlander. <laughs> oh, the next Portlander. All right, good. So it seems like that's only from Portland. I heard somebody who said that. No, it was me. I asked oh. some people the other day. I said, if you're driving a hearse and you heard the coffin in the back, you know, shaking up, what would you do? And everybody that I asked, except my mother, said that they would they would splurt. So it was just me and my mom who said, no, I would go around there and see what's happening. Because obviously maybe the person was in a coma, mispronounced dead and needs help. Everybody else said, I'm splurt. I said, why would you splurt? Because man not dead. Let me say if you're not dead, then <laughs> we are not funny. No, no, that means that I'm say if you're not dead, then you need help, right? Because they have a misconception of the the dead, the dead. That dead. Dead means you become something else in another. That's crazy, man. Exactly. The man are dead, so we're afraid of. I'm not dead. No. Are you afraid of me? No. <laughs> there you go. Right. So. This is uh, mortality of the soul concept. Really I'm from Saint James, sir. Yes, I'm from Saint James, and we've I've heard that too. You heard that one too. Yeah, and I think when the babies are young, there are some things they say they put on them to prevent. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yes, I, I heard that one too. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We've heard so many stories. Anybody ever heard of rolling calves? Oh, yes, I have heard yeah, of rolling yeah, calves. Yeah. Those are the scariest stories. Man, and you're walking at night and you wonder, boy, I suppose to see one. No, it is a stressful experience. Stressful. You're at your friend's house and they tell you about rolling calf, and you, know you have to walk up to your house now. It's stress. Stress out. <laughs> I remember those days when I was younger. And then now, looking back with what I know now, is that man? Well, it is said that it is the advent of motor vehicles and bright lights why those activities have gone into cessation. Really? Yes, that's that's what I was told when I was growing up. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. The bright lights of the motor vehicles and stuff like that. So they just disappear because of that. Well, on the street, Boy, right? well, well, brother Sheldon, I don't know about your parish, but in my parish where you have the infamous um, Rosa Hall Estate and stuff like that. So those people who are descendants, like my tribe, they would have more potent stories like that. I, if I may add, please. Flatbridge have a little history that if you are the last person that is there and nobody's before you or behind you and you're going around the gorge close to the Flatbridge, you have a horse or a cow that would meet you out there and cause you to swerve. And when you do, you would go straight over into the ditch of the river. That Anybody familiar with that story? No, I've never heard that one before. Yes, man, that is about Flatbridge. If you are the last person going around and nobody's before you or after, you're, you're going to meet upon the horse. You are from St. Catherine. Yes, I am. That's, that's, that's in your parish. So every parish have the more little thing. Right? Or every group of people. You know, it's. That's, that's true, brother. Yes. I heard a story um, in, when I was in grade four. The, my teacher told that story about um, a lady and she saw a duck with um, long teeth, longer than a fork. And it was very funny. That was funny. The people I said? You said that, that was a funny story. No, I was scared. Oh, yeah, I mean, we have these stories that we hear all the time, all the time and, and it's, it's, it's where we are conditioned for spiritualism. Are you hearing me? Everybody hearing me? Okay, okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Um, 
Well, you know, this thing that's catching the feet of a lot of people is this black supremacist thing that comes back to ancestor veneration. Yes. You know, I don't, you can talk on that if, if, you, if you may. But I think it's catching the feet of a lot of us, you know. The, 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 the people going to ancestor worship. Anybody remember the movie? Gosh. Black, black Panther. Panther. Yes, man. Black Panther. And in that movie, it's about ancestor worship. The, because this is something that comes from the, the, the African descent. The Egyptian mythology. Why, why, why are you guys going to movies? Right here in Jamaica, we have Kumina. Kumina, yes. And that's not, that's not fiction. No, it's not fiction. It's not fiction. It's real. And pe the people, people, who, people who have gone to this stuff have gotten possessed. Yes. That's not story, man. Yes. So, so we see. So could somebody read this quote for me, please, on the, on the screen here? The second one. I'll just, I'll just read the first one. Among the most successful agencies of the great deceiver are the delusive teaching and nine wonders of spiritualism. One second, hold that thought. So what we're talking about here, all the, the stories that we refer to, these are the lying wonders of spiritualism. The lying wonders, the wonders are the, the, the manifestations, the, the signs, the miracles, the things that occur out of the ordinary. Those are the wonders of spiritualism that we're experiencing. And you know what? Here's, here's what this thing does. You know, my sister, finish reading the quote and then I'll make a statement and then we can talk about it afterwards. Sure. Disguised as an angel of light, he spread his, spreads his net where least suspected. If men would but study the book of God with earnest prayer that they might understand it, they would not be left in darkness to receive false doctrines. But as they reject the truth, they fall a prey to deception. Amen. Which is what uh, Thessalonians talks about. They receive not the love of the truth. And then what, what comes after them? God allows them to receive strong delusions. Strong. They may believe in yeah. Amen. Strong delusions. They reject the truth. Strong delusions will come your way. And that's what we're seeing as we, as we look at these things. We have to realize that if we don't anchor our faith in the word of God, we're setting ourselves up to be deluded and to be deceived. Spiritualism. Oh, sorry, with a, sorry, with a lot of what you, um, you just mentioned just now is the whole reason why sometimes when you go to talk to folks, it's so hard to share for them to receive the truth. Are something different because what you're already used to it feels like okay i'm comfortable here so taking on what you're saying it would have to probably look like this for me to receive that can i can i just even add, add a little bit more to what Please. you said it's not even that it looks different sister low it's because they have built their confidence in the, mani the physical manifestation so much that the word of God just no match up to it anymore. And at the same time, you'll be saying, um, um, let's trust God. Let's trust God. And when you're saying, yeah, but when you, when you pray to him and, him and say, what you, <laughs> how do you respond to, the, respond to the answer? Yeah, man, let us just trust God. And you keep saying that, but at the same time, you're not moving. That's right. And the truth is there. That's right. Here's why. Because the, the aim of the devil is to, is to erode people's confidence in the simplicity of the truth. I don't doubt it. That is the aim of the enemy in spiritualism is to, is to allow the manifestations to so captivate the mind that the truth can't do its work anymore. I don't doubt it, sir. We tell somebody when they see a pastor pray and somebody get up Pray for somebody and then person resurrect from the dead. Where you tell a person? You can't talk to that person. What do that know? The moment self rise up another person. My best thing. You can't talk to him. Yeah, that's the 
point. Tell the dead person to go back home. Where am I come from? Ciao. <laughs> You just, you just can't. It just, it's difficult, very difficult. And when you, a, a member of the church, witness these things and witness some of these manifestations, it, it, it's just difficult for you to reach those people with the truth anymore. This is the aim and this is the, the plan, the purpose of spiritualism. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful because that's what happened in the garden. Spiritualism yes. caused her to forget the word of God. Amen. And this a, go, go ahead. There's a flip side though, you know, um, because um, in my little history what, that, 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 I, that I have seen, on the other side of it, the Bible also says the word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. When the word of God goes, I'm dealing in particular to our side of people. Um, in Africa, when the gospel enters such territories and, and come up across such people, you find that they are ready to give up those physical phenomena, even though it's spiritual. They have seen manifestation of the spirit in so many ways, but yet still they are willing to give up all of that for the word of God. I believe the hardest challenge come to those of us who have experienced some form of Christianity. You find, I believe that is where we find the greatest sense of rebellion against the word of God. Yeah, um, from, from our side who experience um, Christianity and also see the corrupt nature of Christianity. I think that is where the challenge lies. Amen. Amen. 100%. That's why I said I use the example of a pastor, which is Christianity. Because the, the people that are outside, it's, it, as it's, it's somehow it's, it's just easier for them to walk away and embrace something new. But when you have a part of the truth, it's difficult for you to say, maybe I don't have the whole truth and move. That, that's the challenge. And, and spiritualism really will be an, an, a net and a snare. Spiritualism is to take people away from the word of God. God sends a message, but... I'm seeing manifestation. I have to reject that message. Let's look at an example in the Bible, and then we can discuss more. Let's turn the Bible to Exodus chapter 7, the seventh chapter in the book of Exodus. Reading verses 8 to 13. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 down to 13. May I have a reader, please? And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then ye thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and, it, and before his servants, and it became a serpent. When Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they, they, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. Amen. Could you read 14 as well, please? Final. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refused to let the people go. Hmm. So we see what happened here, right? God sent his servants to talk to Pharaoh. And his servants performed a miracle. And Moses brought forth his sorcerers and they performed a miracle also. And you know what Pharaoh probably said in his heart? My, my men can do what your men can do. Big deal. Everybody see that? That's what happened. My men can do what your men can do. What's the big deal here? And so his heart was hardened because of the spiritual manifestation. He refused to hear anything that, that God had to say. That's why seeing, seeing is not believing. You ever, we always hear the term, 
seeing is believing and all these things. I was going through the book, um, Truth About Angels, and came upon this, you know, and in it, she said that really they didn't actually turn into serpents, but they looked that way, you know? I'm wondering if I could find it again. Yeah, um, I remember reading book. that to Barack and I remember it too. Uh, so people will treat, so seeing is not believing, the word of God is believing. It's, it's a different mindset, but that's the mindset that we need to Amen. go through. Yeah. Amen. What's um, go ahead, go ahead, Elder. Apart from creation, you know, Elder, there is only one safeguard as it relates to the power of God that we are assured of in the Bible, right? None of us was there at creation, so we can't prove, prove that, right? As to which God actually creates, right? But every other supernatural phenomenon, right? Can be, counterf counterf um, can be counterfeited, but it's something, there's one thing that God set up so far in my understanding that Man will try to replicate, but our other religions will try to copy it somewhat, but it still cannot hold through. And I believe it is found in Isaiah 46 and uh, verse 9 to 10. Let me try and find it. Isaiah 46, um, 9. It says, remember the form of things of old, for I am God, and there is none else i am god and there is none like me and this is how he describes it now declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure so i believe that is the the the, the prophecies of ancient times to present and future i believe that also create a big distinction between the true and the living God and all the other false gods. Amen. Amen. That's what I was thinking while we were reading it. You know? That's the, exactly what I was thinking. We have a what? What do we have? More sure, a more sure, sure word. Sure word. A more sure word. What is it more sure than? What we can see, taste, feel. That's yeah. why we contend. Amen. We have a more sure word. It's more sure than every physical manifestation. Trust the prophecies more than you trust your senses. Yes, um, Elder, can I read it? I found it. It's TA 92.3. Quickly, it says here, the magicians did not really cause their rods to become serpents, but by magic, aided by the great deceiver, they were able to produce this appearance. It was beyond the power of Satan to chain the rods to living serpents, the prince of evil, though possessing all the wisdom and might of an angel falling, has not the power to create or to give life. This is the prerogative of God alone. But all that was in Satan's power to do, he did. He produced a counterfeit. To human sight, the rods were changed to serpents. There was nothing in their appearance to distinguish them from the serpent produced by Moses. Though the Lord caused the real serpent to swallow up the spurious ones, Yet even this was regarded by Pharaoh, not as the work of God's for, but as a result of a kind of magic superior to that of his servants. He's used to magic. His mind is trained towards magic, so it's just a, a stronger dopey. In Jamaica, they say that it's just a stronger dopey or a stronger evil spirit. So that's what he was saying. Oh, so you're a dopey then stronger than mine. That's all right. We're good. Same so go to St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> but Elder, you see what you're saying this is solidifying the point that through spiritualism say um fear was encased in something that he couldn't get out of amen, mm. amen. goodness amen to... amen if i could add, elder, elder just to, to add because you had asked how would you um be with somebody like that 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 is in that state where they're believing their senses, what they're seeing. In, in terms of Pharaoh, the um, Moses snake ate the other one to show that the, it was superior. But I think in our in in our realest sense here in in the world right now, as we live it, uh, one thing I have always found comforting is the word of God. 
So even when my senses are tricking me, I always, thanks be to God, revert back to the word of God and try to put things into perspective based on the word of God because that is the number one thing that the Lord say will never ever change the word of God. It, it, he won't allow that to be manipulated to trick us. Amen. Elda. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Elda. I think the acid test is in this. You see, many of us at where we are now and things and we will state that, okay, yes, man, I, I'm going to have confidence in the word of God and all of these things, and I trust the word of God. But I believe the acid test comes in, 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 in this form also that will prove whether or not we actually believe um, the word of God. Um, for some persons, they will even be sick unto death. Everything that the doctor tries, Everything that the doctor tries to, to do, you try naturopath, you try the various um, medical doctors, and nothing seems to be working. And you hear a voice come and say, go and go see, go look. And the only alternative that it, it, it might seem, you try prayer and fasting, and even that appears not to be working out. But the acid test is this now, whether or not you're going to see the wizard that peep, those who can cast spells, and all of these things. And I'm sure that um, most of us, any, any one of us will find ourselves in that situation. You're going to have Christian people come in to tell us that we need to, to go look. Mm -hmm. Truth. 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 Arabat. Deb Sheldon. Yes, sir. See them good, on. Good. Yes. <laughs> they use they use um, they use a nice red feet to them man. Then they use see them on again, man. I'm uh, uh, gonna look our wizard. Them 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 are gonna tell us say if we go see a physician, man. And then we not tell them say we not tell them say I don't believe that them thing that them them hear them to you now now. But the Bible say I must see a physician, man. Go on a physician, man. You know, say nothing I heard. The Bible say I must go a physician, man. I wish physician would think you're that boy, doctor. I don't know, doctor, man. And then try to convince him best as they can. Yeah, man, that, they do that, yes, man. I've heard that one before. Physician. Yeah, and yeah. This, and this is exactly why we need to ensure that we know the word of God. Because when the, the enemy is coming, it's going to deceive us if we don't familiarize ourselves. When the physician term is used, they are using it out of context. So you know would have to use your brain now and say, all right, when the Bible is talking about physician, is it talking about a witchcraft? Is it talking about somebody that's working um, OBIA or whatever it is that they're doing? Or is it talking about a physician? Either right back to his study method. It Amen. brings you back. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And then we'll back. back then when a person is sick, back in the time of um, um, ancient Israel, when a person is sick, who they normally present themselves to? The seer, the seer, the prophet. The seer. Yes, but and but they for purification they had to do something. The priest, the priest, the priest, the priest. The priest for purification and also for diagnosis. It is the priest. All right. So it, 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 and in 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 the later part of it, the, the prophets are, are are also involved. So when they talk about seer. It is talking about the prophets, God's true messengers. Amen, amen. So let's 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 deal with this 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 issue. Um, Deuteronomy chapter eighteen. Let's turn our Bibles there. Deuteronomy chapter eighteen, and we're reading nine, and we're reading from nine, and we're going all the way down to fourteen. It's not not that long, but but let's let's look at it. You turn him in 19? 18. Oh. 18 verse 9. Okay. So when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Stop right there, my sister. Let me ask you a question. Us know in 2022, how does this apply to us? Going back to ancestor worship. 
That is what we're seeking to do. You talked about it earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. What else? Anybody remember the video I played last night? The first video that I played last night, anybody was on and saw that first one? About the drinking of the blood? The drinking of the blood. You see, we go and we listen to these people and we watch them on TV. Hello. Yes, sir. You need to do a bit of clarification in regards to that question. But what? We missed the last part of what you said. I said you need to do a bit of clarification in regard to your question. Oh, okay, okay. So you want, you want to, ex to expound on it a little bit more? Flesh yeah, because, because I am no Hebrew. I am no, I'm not a Jew. So I am from that nation. I am from those nations which practice these abominations. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a full suite here in Jamaica of, of, of this kind of stuff. 100%. Yeah. So I want you to address me in regard to this now. Yeah, go too deep. Yeah, carry me so I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adopted in re, I'm an adopted um Jew. One hundred percent engrafted. So, yes. Yes, man. Adopted, engrafted, same thing, right? Check this out. This this verse later on would actually answer that question in verse about verse 14. It does answer that question. All right, I'll pause. It does, it does answer the question. But I just wanted to, us to think about it. All these practices that are going on. And we, we see these. It's just, I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunate that this young lady came out and said, after our engagement, we went and drank each other's blood. And it was for ritual purpose. Let's just say that... In the past four years, a lot of information has become available. The fact yeah. of the matter is that this has been a way of life. As a matter of fact, this is not just, this is when you go into near any government you want in the world, near any country you want in the world, behind the scenes, this is the stuff they practice. Yes. It's what I run the world. But if you go back to some of the celebrations during an elder, even the yeah. Valentines and all of these, these, these things, no, it's these are some of the outrageous things that happen in, in, no. in, in, these, in these practices, you know. But, but sir, even, even, even the story surrounding some of our heroes, some of our, some, some of our national heroes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. But that's why we're doing this topic now. To ensure that we're all on the same page. The, the, the fortunate or unfortunate thing, depending on how you're looking at it, is that this young lady came out on a video and said, yes, we do drink each other's blood. Not a goblet full, but we take a couple for ritual purposes. What type of ritual is it that you practice with each other's blood by drinking it? And this is a Hollywood person, am I correct? This is an actress and a musician. Yes, yes. So, so the whole... That, that whole industry. That's the point. That's the point. And then we sit down in our living rooms with our children and play these things on the TV. And this is what's coming in. With Unwittingly all the participating. Unwittingly participating. It, it makes no sense. I, I believe that is where the, the problem lies. You know? Because I believe that they should be free to practice whatever their religious convictions are, but the problem is we as Christians, we seem to love it. That's the challenge. That no, is the problem. No, we're ignorant. And um, let, all um, when we know, we say we no, still have to watch it. And we no, still have to listen to their music. Until you are properly educated, it is, it is natural for you to be drawn into this thing. So you have, if you're not educated, if you're not the kind of person who is um, really anxious to know the truth behind what you'll see, 
then you are a, you are a willing victim. Elder, may I, may I agree may I agree to some part with that statement, you know. But I have had friends; those friends are still alive today. We say, listen, I look at paganism. I think I go to heaven, see him here. So, in other words, they are well aware, <laughs> well knowledgeable, but they clear is such stupidity. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, Elder, if I could add, the, the, if you're bringing up about the Megan Fox thing, the Hollywood, the whole of their, uh, well, most of them are, I'd say some of them, I, I'm not even certain that percent is well documented. And that's why she let it slip because, you know, just like how we would grow up in a Christian culture, they grew up in Hollywood, they are grew up underneath Scientology and these other types of religion. Right, and these are some of the things that they practice. But they would the way how they do it. They don't really. They don't um, expose it to them. The deep rootedness of it. 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 And that's why it's so deceptive. Because on the basis of it, you think you'd be worshiping God and everything until you reach a certain. And I'm doing air quotes levels. Then they're exposed to different rituals and different things for you to get more wealth, more power, more this and that. It's well. It's well documented. But as the the, the brother said before is ignorance we don't know these things and when we get ourselves caught up in them we it's too late right i think there's another 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 lady that was in it and she came out of it and they ostracized her and she was talking about and she's not she's not even not christian you can see that she just used her common sense and realized that something was wrong and she came out of it so it is well documented but if you don't know you just don't know you know, sir, um, as you mentioned about that, my mind went back to even the songs, the gospel songs. I was wondering one at a time how I couldn't hear, well, I wasn't hearing this one particular one um, singer being made mention of Ty Trebek. When I saw a video of him, I think it was on YouTube, he said the music industry was demanding um, a lot different things are they're doing um different things now that he is not um intentionally wanting to participate in so therefore he's coming out of it so i'm like okay and then he you knows starts to talk about what is going on in the music industry and because of all of that you find out that he's um he's letting it be known that a lot of times when you don't hear some singers or some musician or some gospel music um, persons. It's because of what they're requiring them to do in the music industry, the gospel music. It's the same so, industry. Yeah. If, if, I, if I may, Ella. One second, Ella. Olena, this hand up and then you can go afterwards. Sorry, sorry. Um, Sheldon, are you hearing me? Clear. Um, there was a video on YouTube one time. It's not on it again. Like, they catch up and take it off. Um. You can never find it again. It was a man. He was in like, you know, when you have a local community center and a gathering of people and he was explaining to them about things that goes on in the background. I tried to find that video on and on and it has been removed. He, 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 from, he was a child. His father was a priest in the this Illuminati thing. And from a child, his teaching was that Lucifer is light. And he's saying growing up till he reached teenager, he and other kids used to fight because the other kids were telling him about Jesus and what he learned is the opposite. What he learned was Whatever them say about Jesus, a Lucifer in a filling in the blanks for him. So then teach him the opposite from he was at a tender age coming up. And his father tell him that when he reach adulthood, he is to pick up, he is to take up the button from him and become the priest for the temple. And him say when he touched 18, 19 Sheldon, that was his first time seen a ritual where a live human being was being put to death for someone else's gain. 
sacrificed. Yes, man, he gets sacrificed. And he's saying, cry. And in a longer run, his father hit him in his face and said, where you cry for? Man up, man, that's part of a duty from moving forward. And his wife was given to him. Not selected, not going out me to a woman and no, selected. An ex priestess. And I meet one, he say meet one, 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 one stout man, countryman. And the man invite him to church. Cause man, he say man said to him, say, he is dark. And it's full time that he needs to know the truth. And he, the man invite him to church, Sheldon, and he said, could you go in our church? It's like he will be in the fight him from going to the church. He said, up on the step, he have to sit down and wait till the church over. And he said, the man come out and see him and say, you could have come in the church, right? He said, because the whole being is fighting against God. And at that man, he said, take time. He said, man, come in my house and start fling out all of the idols them were having in the house. Pray over in the house, cleanse out in the house, and give him one Bible. He said, for nights he could sleep because the organization was working spells on him, for track him, for find him, for pull him in. He said, he could sleep at night time. He said, I didn't need that for going on. And there was a sheriff at the community center. And he pined upon the sheriff and said, I know that you guys are eyeing it too because your jurisdiction is different. You have to abide by what they say. So don't fight me. That him I said to them, you know, I start laugh. And at the end, he said something. He said, America is being trapped in a cage and everyone thinks it is the land of freedom. But once I set foot and get rooted, it's like they close the bird cage with you in it and give you what they want to feed you in the brain. Media, everything. So anything them say, goes in your system, stir up your whole being, and then try to control your thinking. And he's, he ain't the last thing that he said, and he said, if they're not here from him tomorrow night, is either in going back in a hiding, or then get to him. And he just sign off right there. So he said, whole industry, movie, music, you name it. Once you want to make it big, or go high, you're going to have to somewhere down the point, sacrifice something you love. Yeah. 100%. 100. We, 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 have, we have seen it. And as we said before, Ella Sylvester, get, get ready. The, the issue is, and I said, we have to become wise as to what's going on around us. Otherwise, we're going to be sucked in. And these things are going to catch us. And that is not wisdom. That's not, that's not the discernment that we should have. Elder Sylvester. Yeah, I just wanted to mention probably the most current thing now that is happening if you're paying attention any at all in the United States. And that's the Roe v. Wade issue. Um, mm. but, I, but I think for, for me, the, the most interesting part of this is the people who openly support this. And in in openly supporting this, we have, I mean, political people and so on. But I think the, the most dangerous part of it is the, the so-called Christian people, right? Who will not openly support this, but they will support the movement that support it. Mm -hmm. So unwittingly, they don't even realize that they are involved. And when you, when you speak to people who live up there, it is amazing to see that no, they don't agree with it, but they still support the people who who, who grandfathering this stuff. I mean, what could be blinder than that? And I'm talking about people who claim to be Christian. It's a confusion. Yeah. Babylon. This is it. And, and this is what we have to experience and, and um, just fortify ourselves in the word of God. All right, I'm going to share two quotes here. May I have a reader, please. 
Well, I didn't finish reading the scripture. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please go ahead. So it was um, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 14. Yes. Verse 10. Nine. The verse 10, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use it divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out of from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with, thy, with the Lord thy God. For these nations, which thou shalt possess, are unto observers of times, and unto diviners, um, but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. So God has not suffered his people, whether it be ancient Israel or it is spiritual or modern Israel, which we represent. He has not suffered us to use diviners and magicians and sorcerers and necromancers See, and yes. opium man. No, no, Go look, Todd. Who? Sir. <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Talks about making your son or your daughter pass through the fire. What is the modern version of that? The education system. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not, making any I'm not commenting on it. I'm just, I'm just asking if you've heard that. Yes, that's what I've heard. Okay. Say that again, sir. The passing through the fire is passing through the, the regular education system. Okay. Somebody's that's what asking it, how. Retraining the brain. So, so passing through the fire is a, is a short... Um, what this represents is um, the children being offered to the god Molech, and they were actually put in a fire and burned as a sacrifice. Right. Now, um, well, they, well, Ella, just to add some more to it, I don't know if you were going to say the ones that came true were regarded as gods, and the ones that burned were just a sacrifice. All right, yes. But none of the children of Israel ever had any children pass through it. Right. So um, the, the, these, these diviners, these, um, what do you call it, consultants, yeah, they, they, are, they are more sophisticated now, right? And it is now said that in, I believe in, there's a museum in London where they actually have, a, what do you call it? They have a, a statue? Is it? Yeah, something like that. And what they have is, a, a child sitting on a pile of books and and uh, you know so instead of fire he's on a pile of books under the god mole I've, I've never seen it i've just read about it yeah I, I, I have too so that's why i was asking you if you are aware of of this um, modern interpretation of that yes and it is their interpretation not ours that mole right. is the god of education all right I hope I've answered um, um, her question. I, I would I would hope. You have, sir. Yes. And my, mouth, my mouth is still coming up off the ground, but you have. Yes, you. yes. And so we have to be careful with the, the type of education that we participate in and that we allow our children to participate in. We've been warned of that through the, the pen of inspiration uh, countless times. Right, and so none of these things. So, well, so sir, people. just just sir, sorry. So I'm I'm thinking now of the fighting in schools and the bloodshedding, and in, we talked a, a while ago about bloodshed for whatever purposes. 
God and you would have tight happening school to the point where pardon go ahead go ahead no man okay, i heard, I heard Ella nelson i heard nelson but i don't know i don't know what he right. yeah i think i heard his voice too so as i'm i'm you're, um, you're talking about the, the, the school setting and stuff my mind got to like fight with teacher or fight with student um um individually and they're the blood spilling and it would look like it that um what the sacrifice the blood is the one the, the blood that is is what um is offered to the sacrifice and as this lady said they drink it so when you have fights in schools knowing that it is the type of system it is when bloods are spilled it is seen as seeming to be the, the um the, 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 the spirit will be getting some sacrificial offering or something or something from there feeding on I don't know if I'm feeding on, on or encourage or strengthening that side of thing. I don't know because my mind is just I get where your mind is going. I don't know that I can speak yeah. to that though. Yeah, so so not like no. a while so not like a while to me, Angie, but I don't know um, that I can speak to that one. But what I what what I will say, this, this is always my saying, Angie, and I don't know if you understand it. Um I believe it is um what's his name? Um, Luther, who said that the universities are the gateway to hell because the Bible is not taught in, in university. And mm -hmm. I've been to university. The Bible is not taught in university. But I, I would argue that the education system is such that it does not prepare your mind for God. If you want to start with primary school education, high school, you name it, it doesn't prepare you for God. Right? Um, they call jump over the moon is not a preparation at all. It is it is to make you wander away. That's what I would say. Yeah, and and you have some things too that I just uh, I see Nelson. You, you want you want I heard you before, so you want to make a point? Yes, I, yeah. Um, I understand what Sister Angie is saying too, but I can't specifically relate to it in any way. But what I can see, especially as what is happening in Jamaica right now is the issue of God rings and people are being, children are being killed and stab, stabbed and, and all of these things for wanting possession of these rings. So um, that is what, I heard somebody say. Those are other influences. That, you couldn't blame that on the school, that wouldn't be fair. Yes, that, uh, no, there's no blame on the school. If I may jump in, Elder, Please. And, and just to comment. Uh, Ole and Pusey, I, I think this is more closer to the reference here. I, I, based on the knowledge of the education system in Jamaica, we don't have it so much as a problem here, but it is very prevalent and we are heading there because everything that America does, we basically follow, right? So what's happening in the schools in America, they have removed God from the curriculum. You know, they take out anything that has to do with God or Bible or, 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 or anything. They want you to just be neutral. So that's why they can embrace even um, Lucifer teachings and so on, because they, they acknowledge that that is a religion and they want people to be inclusive, right? Outside of that, they are introducing sexual immorality to the children at a very, very early age, telling them that they have the choice of whichever sex that they want and all of the different things that has to do with that kind of thing. That's so when you drop off your kid to school, they are being taught and indoctrinated already with all of these ritual and practices, but it's done on a very, very soft touch. So you don't even know what is happening. So I would agree that if they, if they said that the current passing through the fire is the school system, then it, it would make sense to me because um, that is what's happening there in America. It's, it's very, 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 very scary when you actually uh, acknowledge what is really happening there and what people are experiencing right now. Amen. Yeah, we live, things have gotten quite crazy. But remember, verse 14, not verse 14 said, but as for thee, as for thee, plural for you, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. God's people should have nothing to do with all these practices, witchcraft, obiaman, 
uh, diviners, guard rings, Ouija board. What are the other ones? I can't, I'm, I'm not even remember all of them right now. Isla love me, Isla keep me, Isla all of them are something there. <laughs> Isla met me rich. Oh boy. Um, I want to make a couple of big burgeoning feel in Jamaica. I want to read a scripture, Isaiah 2, reading from verse 6. You see here that God forsakes Israel for a reason. Um, it says, therefore, child, therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. Why? Because they are replenished from the east mm. and are sayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the children of strangers. Being replenished, being strengthened from eastern mystical religions. And we're seeing in Jamaica, I would love you to comment on it, Elder, if you may. We're seeing in Jamaica, Ravi, this, some Indian people say you can come and we'll tell you all these things. Is this a form of um, being um, spiritualism in such a way that God will just have to leave you. To, to yes, leave. God will have to leave you. Uh, remember, you know, another aspect to, to the Eastern um, thing to you know, Elder is that is that is they worship the sun in the East. So sun worship is also a part of the, the this Eastern uh, push. And so sun worship all the Eastern mystical things. Um, when we look at like somebody, even the, the the mangas, the comics, the animes, like like b back in the day, I used to watch Naruto. That is based on Japanese mythology or uh, yeah, some Eastern uh, mysticism that's based upon a lot of these things that we even partake of. And so a lot, all these things, we have sun to, worship. The sun worship, all these things. All point of them back, points back to sun worship. All of them point back to that. And so we, we have to understand and, uh, and be knowledgeable. Otherwise, we get trapped in these things. And they will be the reason why we don't make it into the kingdom. You know, you used that word a while ago, partake. And it, it leads me to another scripture. Because when you partake, you eat. Yes. All right. So you eat. And I'm like, well, we're talking about eating mentally. So if we could just view it that every time you sit down to read, you sit down to be detained to watch something or to listen to something, you're mentally eating. And I'm here looking at like Isaiah um, 30, verse 24. He said, the oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which had been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. Child. And that tells me that Whatever we're imbibing, I like what you say, partaking. We have to make sure it's clean. Amen. Because that come out of your system, it go and it lodge somewhere in our subconscious, like what um, Brother Bowes talked about this morning. It doesn't leave. And it, I know it, it causes problems for you. And you know what the problem that it causes? It, it, it prevents the word of God from taking root. And what, does, what did David say? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not see. So you have no safeguard against sin when we allow these things in. And so we have to be careful. All right. Any, anybody else? This is how powerful spiritualism is. It just comes right behind. It's exciting. It's nice. And it, it bypasses your conscious mind and destroys your life before you even know it. It just goes right in because you just watch it and it just looks, oh, this is, this is, this is nice to watch. This is, this is fun. This is a good read. This is, and, and, and it captivates us to a degree that we cannot recover if we allow it. Only the power of God can set us free. All right. Any, any, anybody want to? Brother Gordon or anybody else. Out. Go ahead. When you say, when the Bible says familiar spirit, what does that mean? We have another one that we're going to look at. But I don't know if you want to go ahead and, um, and, and expound on that one for us. No, I, I would just speak what I already think I know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I'm wondering why it says familiar. You know? 
I, I, I've never looked into why. The best one you can look at, um, a, a good scripture you can look at about familiar spirit is the story with, 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 with Saul. I, I, that's Samuel, that's a, we're a familiar gonna go person. There. Yeah. That, that's a, that we're going to go there eventually, but I just wanted to get to get Williams, Ella Williams' take on it, um, no, just based on what he's thinking. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking and I'm saying, okay, so these there are agencies of evil spirits out there, real demons. I remember one night sitting on a veranda. I'm so happy I had Sharice with me. So I have proof. Okay. And listen to me. I smelled a ram goat scent so strong. And there was not one ram goat around. I just get up on his feet. Is that familiar scent then, Ella? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know that. That's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there are real agencies of evil spirits out there. So I'm wondering if the spiritualism and saying that the dead people have life and this impersonation is to make us familiar with these demons without while in putting the facade of our departed relatives. So the, the relatives aren't there, but it's making us familiar with these demons. That's what I was wondering. The, the scent, the scent, the look, okay. the dress, everything. It, it demonizes us. No, not demonize. It's, me, it's making us inter, inter, in having interplay with demons because it's not the real person. The person is dead. So who is it then? Then it's demons. And suddenly you're playing with demons. That's crazy. Ella can heal. Yeah. Ella can heal. My response yes, was not yes. meant as a joke, you know. It is, it, it, it is serious because, okay. and I do agree with everything that you have said. Um, you know that each of us individuals, we have certain asset that is unique to us. And in many situations, in my family uh, as well, we had the experience where people, family members had passed on. And you will suddenly smell that unique smell or that scent that that person has. And say, okay, whoa, such a person was just here, you know. And mm -hmm. almost everybody would concur and say, yes, man, I know that that person was here because we smell that person. And only that person carries that scent. And they'll, they'll try and describe the scent that, um, that almost everybody was smelling and saying, I thought you, this person was here even though that person is deceased. So it's a familiar spirit, familiar scent, nonetheless. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Sylvester? Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I do, I'm not, Brother Kenny, I'm not making light of what you just said by what I'm about to say. But for me, I think what represents the greatest threat in this matter of spiritualism, Elder, is uh, when we end up accepting, especially present truthers. Because uh, as I've always said, you know, I find present truth more dangerous than the structure. And what I find is in present truth, there are a lot of doctrines that are adopted and uh, sometimes the fervor with which people pursue these things, I don't think they know how dangerous it is. Let me just give you two. We have one that we call the no work doctrine. And in more recent time, I've learned of don't get married doctrine. So while, while I hear Brother Kenny, but those two I just mentioned, I, I find them scary. Scary because I've seen in one instance where somebody took this thing seriously and left their job. And to this day, the persons are struggling. So for, for me, Ella, that to me is more detrimental to one's um, spiritual health and the saving of their soul. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I made any sense just now. 
Well, it, it, it is, I understand you. It is if the, the other uh, members of the family here know what you mean by no work and no marriage doctrine. And then if they, if they can assimilate that, then maybe it would make more sense. All right. <laughs> So explain, there, there are explain. All right. Um, I'm gonna ask Marvin to help me with the no marriage one, but the, the no work one is that people are being encouraged to leave their jobs and um, you know they should just go out into the field and do the work. Um, so the only work you can do is to leave your job and go on the road distribute tracks, talk to people uh, along those lines. Um, I mean, how do you encourage somebody with a young family to leave their job? I, I, it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm telling you, this is some of the extremes. And as far as I'm concerned, it has a spiritual com component that it is dangerous to the health of, of the other folks. Uh, the no marriage thing, I mean, I used to hear it, but I didn't know it had now become a doctrine where because of the time we are living in, people are being discouraged to get married. I mean, I don't know what's the basis for that, but I'm just telling you that that is now being taught among some of the present truth folks. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I made it made the point clearer. That is true, Ella. Very true. Um, I, I think it was Sister Normalin who asked. I don't know if I made if it was made clear to her. I understand the work one, Elder. I'm talking about the no marriage one. <laughs> Marvin, you want to help out there? Because, because I know about persons who just will just get married and they, and they don't want to have babies because they are saying they are living in the, in the last days and it's um, the Bible says that they are woe unto those who, have, who give suck. So they're having challenges with that. Uh, I believe that, that that situation um, and those discussions are primarily for the persons who are married and uh, nobody should try and influence them. A typical example, when I just came to the church in about 1999, though it's not this, this, uh, my experience or testimony should not be the standard for anyone. Right, but I, when I when I just came to the church in 1999, at the time there was this switching over from 1999 to 2000, the millennium bugs issue and all of those things. That was also um, a, a, a concept that was very much prevalent in the, in that time. So we're in the last days, and you should not be getting married, and you should not have children. My daughter is almost 22 years now. And I believe the spirit of prophecy is our guide, which always which state that we should occupy until he comes. In other words, live for today as if he's going to come. Live today as if God is going to come for, come today. But nonetheless, you have to make preparation and going forward for tomorrow. So it is that decision, as I said before, is primarily for the husband and wife to consider, do their calculation and watch how things are going, and uh, they determine what, what is, is best for their families, and not for any religious person to give as a dictate and forcing the decisions of people. That no, is as much as I would say on it. No, the no married one, we're talking about the people who are not yet married, or who desire to be married. And the, 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 what is being um, preferred is that they shouldn't consider it, period, because of the time in which we're living. So like no. Pope so it's not like what I mean, like Pope. When it, yes, because I'm a Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, what but, but what I'm but what I'm saying, saying what I'm saying, Kenil, what I'm saying is, if you're gonna make it, if you if if you're gonna make it a prohibition, and you're gonna make it a teaching, and 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 frighten young people, right? I, I am, I, we, we have crossed a threshold now, brother. You get what I'm saying? And I am, I'm putting it squarely, I'm putting it squarely in the, in the realm of this topic. Mm -hmm. 
That's where I'm placing it. The, I'm still, I, I'm still assimilating it, in in connecting it. Still, still, still processing, processing. Yeah. No, but if it, what I'm saying, if you're teaching it, I'm arguing that it, you have made it now a doctrine. You have made it a spiritual matter. Okay, okay, okay. You get what I I'm see. saying? If you if you if you're teaching it, you're prohibiting people. You 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 you're putting on a prohibition, and you're arguing that it is because of the time in which we are living. Yes, and you're affecting people's lives in in that kind of way. I put it to you, sir, that you I, I am elevating it to the level of the discussion or of the topic that is under consideration. The idol of Judah, spiritism. Yes, sir. Let, let me just let me just share something here. Um, Very clear. Is this the right one? Are, are we are we seeing this? Could could we have a read of here from the pen of inspiration? Read us these two paragraphs. Okay, starting with Aquila? Yes. Starting with Aquila? Yes. yes okay. Sir. Aquila and Priscilla. All right, I can't read. Someone else will have to do it. I have this one. In my own. No problem. No problem. The blessings of the Lord. <laughs> you can't say that you don't have the noise right now. <laughs> read him from Aquila, brother Sheldon. Yes, please. Aquila and Priscilla were not called to give their whole time to the ministry of the gospel. Yet, these humble laborers were used by God to show Apollos the way of truth more perfectly. The Lord employs various instrumentalities for the accomplishment of his purpose. And while some with special talents were chosen to devote all their energies to the work of teaching and preaching the gospel. Many others upon whom human hands have never been laid in ordination are called to act an important part in soul saving. Thank you for that affirmation. Continue. Yes, please read the second one as well. There is a large field open before the self-supporting gospel worker. Many may gain valuable experiences in ministry while toiling a portion of the time at some form of manual labor. And by this method, strong workers may be developed for important service in needy fields. Amen. So we realize that God doesn't call everybody to do the same work. And so what I intended to 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 make this a subject. So you, you had the material there. I had it before. So when she brought, I just brought it up. So it wasn't supposed to be a subject, okay. but you brought it up. So I just, okay. I just <laughs> need it to everybody. So that right there, that doctrine has been debunked. We have put that aside. And we should. All right, so let's go back, back to our regular programming. Right. Um, so the last thing we looked at was in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18. And the Bible says that God says that we his people should not participate in these things. Anybody remember that? Amen. Guard rings, obiaman, Ouija board. Would, 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 would horoscopes fit in this as well? Amen. Yep. 100%. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, large, large. They try large. To get young men in these things. Yes. What about Bible and key? Oh yes. I do, I do, I do, I'm not. That's a game that they play in schools and Charlie, Charlie. Yeah. What was that? I'm not sure. I know that. Bible and key. Bible and key. Uh, when they say a thief, so, uh, and they want to find out who thief is, so then gather everybody when I come upon. And Taiwan all key run on Bible. Uh, when when the Bible when the key when the key stop by you, 
They ask everybody who would do it. If I use like what I say now, are you thief the money? I say no, the key I go answer. I make you know, say, are you? You must say I go stop shake for you. So I must say something like that. I say go. The people who they say. Let me give you a better context around it because personally, it's, some, it's, it's something I, I, I that I've, never, I, I've never heard of. I mean, I'm sure I probably have heard about it in passing, but please go ahead. Like, Yes, man. I'm aware yeah. of that Bible and key. So it's something that I've personally done before and it was scary, man. I never, I said I never do this thing again. So it's a case where I remember having a friend and he stole some money from me. And um, he was literally saying, I know him, I know him. So because growing up as a child, I've seen people done it before. It's like they get this door key, you know, those old door keys. And it, well, well, it is a key, a regular key. And what they do, they put it on a scripture. Leave it's the scripture that talks about St. Peter and Paul. By St. Peter, by St. Paul, something like that. And they tie it and then they, they put the key in the middle of the Bible and tie a cross with the, with the string. And then two people hold it between their fingers. And they said the thing, you know, is it children that steal the money or is it Brother Williams that steal the money? And if it's any of you guys, the Bible is going to spin out of your hand. Once you do that. And really, and it, it happened. It happened. It was a crazy, crazy experience. And I dropped the Bible and I run. And from that, I say, I'll never do this thing again. Interesting. So we're not we're not supposed to participate in these types of things, family. Thank God for salvation, uh, Michael. <laughs> yeah, but it was just out of ignorance. I just wanted but my money. You know, I've seen it work with other people before. I just wanted but my money. But when I did it, I, I was so scared I dropped the Bible and I run. Michael. Yeah. But but what it's isn't I see um, but another way they must see um, I see them them tie up the Bible, them 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 use a string and tie up the Bible totally I have the key hang down. And them them the, the, the Bible verse somebody say it out of their mouth, on and on. And me see stop on a person. So is a different way that. Well, I guess you have different ways to do it. Yeah, it's crazy. But but Elder, go, go ahead, yes, Elder. Elder. What is interesting is that the Bible is being used in these processes, mm -hmm. right? And I put it to you that almost every OBI had, right? That you can think of. The Bible is always a tool which is utilized. Absolutely. So it, it, it is sad, but that is the reality. Absolutely. That is why we must esteem the word of God better than our necessary food. And man shall not live by word, um, bread alone, but by every word. Not just the, the, to have the script of the Bible and utilize in some spiritualistic way. It is to live thereby and be obedient to the word of God. I think that not is the most important way. and crucial aspect in a Amen. practical way. Amen. Amen. So none of these things... None of these practices. Why anybody remember if we can go back when 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 God entered into the covenant with with, with um with Abraham and he consummated the covenant by himself by walking through the carcass. Anybody remember that 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 um that account when Abraham cut the thing in two and he and, and he, the, the, the birds came down to eat it and he fanned the birds away and then it got dark and he fell asleep. Amen. Anybody remember that, that account? What did Christ say to him? He said, your children would be slaves in a land and strangers in a land and they'll be in slavery for 400 years till the iniquity of the... Because the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And I believe in the book of Le Leviticus chapter 18, or it could be Numbers chapter 18, verse 24, 
It said the land vomited out the inhabitants and it talks about spiritualistic practices. Uh, it talks about bestiality. It talks about homosexuality. It talks about all these practices that were abominations. And then guess what happened after that? Then God pronounced that their cup was full and now you can go and take the land. Leviticus. Leviticus. That's right. And so we have to, we have to recognize that God's people should not be partaking in this because these are the same reasons why the, that filled up the cup of the iniquity of these people in the land of Canaan. Same practices that we're talking about, plus more, et al. Ella. So, sir, they come out from among them and be separate with the fall right here, eh? Amen. Uh, Ella. Yes, sir. The preach that the earth is going to vomit them out, it has prophetical implication to the end time, and that can be deemed as an eight speech. Ella. Ella. You, you are going into the prophetic aspect of it. I was talking about the, the application in that time. The literal application is eight speech too. But, the, but, but here's the truth. This happened. This is history. It's history. They don't say the Lord, Ella. No fight, no fight. They don't no say the Lord stands. I'm saying, I'm just saying it's history. So I'm not making this up. I'm just recounting history. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's what's happening here, right? All right. So so let us progress. I, would you believe that I, it's now 450? And I am at page four of 21. I'm moving through at a very nice pace. So you have another week, my brother. <laughs> Say it again, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a really nice two, pace. Two. At a really nice pace, right? But anyhow, let's see if we can push up. Could I have a reader for this one, please? The saints must get a thorough understanding of the present truth, which they will be obliged to maintain from the scriptures. They must understand the state of the dead, for the spirit of the devil devils, of devils yeah. will yet appear to them, professing to be beloved friends and relatives, who will declare to them that the Sabbath has been changed. Also, other unscriptural doctrines, early mm -hmm. 87, 9, 1854, LDE 15. You, uh, leave, you can leave all the references. Through the two great errors, the immorality of the soul and immortality. Sunday, go again. Immortality. Through the, pardon me, through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness. Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome, the great controversy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. So we are to understand present truth through the scriptures. Because your loved ones that are dead are going to come to you and tell you that the Sabbath has been changed and that you can do this or you can do that. And it's okay to do this. Other unscriptural doctrines. Then we're going to have the immortality of the soul, which we covered earlier, which lays the foundation for spiritualism, which is what we're dealing with now. And through spiritualism, Sunday sacredness is going to come on board. Because when your loved one comes back, just because you, you have been caught up in spiritualism and, and said to Angie, Angie, you know, say, may they have heaven for our day. I mean, they're on God. And him say, you know, the, uh, the, the Sabbath, you know, if you keep the Sabbath in Angie, you know, say, no, no, go so. You know, say, I'm not true, though. 
That is happening now, you know, Elder. I mean, never know that. Elder, it's true. You ever hear some person say, in other words, a God himself have to come and tell them, say, they must keep a Sabbath? You ever, hear that, that, you ever hear that terminology yet? I've heard that before, yes. So in other words, we know that now going to happen, right? But we know on the flip side that the Satan and him, him confederates are going to come and, and say that. Yes. Elder, if I may add earlier, a lady asked why a snake, why um, Eve would have listened to a snake. I would not be so surprised if she wasn't fascinated with snakes in the garden. And that's why that familiarity led her down that path. Interesting. But Sheldon, if some of my yes. family members come back and say that, may I ask them how you end up by heaven, by the way, to begin with? What do you mean? Me not understand it. No, I'm saying if, you, if some of my family members then come back and tell me that, may I ask them how them end up by heaven, by the way? Because you understand the judgment and you understand character, right? Well, I, I, I think Elder, what he's trying to say is that they have no business being in heaven in the first place. Well, I day. understand that. No, man, I understand that. But <laughs> he, you, we understand that the, your character is going to be what's going to take. But a lot of people don't understand what we understand. So if the family member come back, they'll just take it. Because they don't know what we know. But they believe in spiritualism. And so they're You're easy right. to stuck off their feet. Why? Because the first statement said that our understanding must be grounded in what? The scriptures. And if they don't have an understanding grounded in the scriptures, they have no safeguard when these things come. Here's why we're so easy, easily swept away. Could we turn our Bibles? We looked at this last, last evening. Could we turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 12, reading verses 38 and 39 as we move forward? Amen when you get there. Acts, no, sorry, Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 and 39. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. 38 and 9? Thir yes. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. You see, when we start becoming people that, that are fascinated with signs and we're seeking after a sign, you have some, I remember having a conversation with a sister, and she said, I know that my church is real. Because I've seen people cast demons cast out. I've seen people healed. I've seen these things. So the physical manifestation has so engrossed this, this, this person's mind that I'm saying, hey, look, this is what the word of God said. No, but I know my pastor is real because I've seen this. Or I know my congregation is real. I'm no, I, I've seen this. So what she's seen is way more important than what the Bible has to say about the experience. So because. last week, sorry, last week, Sabbath, um, the light went where I am and I had to go by the Nelsons. And on my way through the gate, I noticed a set of I think it was four lanes issuing tracks. And I realized that they were from the Universal Church of Hagley Park Road. You know what they were um, advertising and trying to encourage my, my cousin to do? Take the tracks because what is happening at church? A lot of miracles are going on there, and the Christ that was on the cross is who they worship. And I couldn't stop long enough to say anything because my time was running, so I don't run off. And I said, boy, God, honestly, this is serious for truth. Spiritualism, so, it's there. Miracles that take place. Come see the miracle. Not come hear the word of God. Come see the miracle. The man heal. He more money, and them, them forget about the money. Carry this go home in your back pocket and sleep on it. Some foolishness. But here's the truth. 
it, there is a manifestation that captivates the mind. Get the holy water from Israel. Yes, man. Get the special handkerchief. Yes, man. And that's why character building is so important, you know, during this time. Absolutely. My All handkerchief is special. Re repeat, sis. My handkerchief is special. I bought it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, these are Brother the Gordon. Yes, sir. But are, isn't it the same thing when a lot of people um, see people speaking in tongues and think automatically they must have the Holy Spirit and may not have it? It's not, no difference. But, but remember, we have to ensure that we use the Bible definition. I know the Bible uses the word tongues. I know we have interpreted To what tongues to mean? Right? Remember, we have, everything must be rooted back from the scriptures. Right? Correct, so, correct. Amen. We would see a sign. That's what they said. We would see a sign. Give us a sign. And most of these people maybe are not saying give us a sign, but they're looking in their heart. They're looking to see something happen. Ooh, something, something fascinating to capture them and to captivate them. The simplicity of the gospel just resonates on too low a frequency. What is a this sign? Brings me to, 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 brings back to my remembrance when Jesus was dying on the cross, they were telling him to come down and they will believe him. Yes, they still were looking for a sign. So what, what is a sign, everybody? When you look at the Bible, use the word sign in this context. What is it referring to? A miracle, but I don't remember the verse. We can substantiate that in so many ways, man. The Bible uses three words interchangeably or sometimes together, one or two or all three. Um, two or three, all three together. Signs, wonders, and miracles. So a sign or a wonder is a miracle. Everybody follow that? Yes, I have one. Exodus 7 verse 3. Go ahead. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Signs and wonders used together there. Anybody found anything else? You should be able to find a, 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 yeah, a, multi, a lot multitudes of texts that, that would substantiate this. Let's look at one quickly. Acts chapter 8, verse 13. Acts 8, 13. Amen. Go ahead. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So miracles and signs are synonymous and signs and wonders are synonymous. Can we see that? Yeah. Let's find one where all three are used together in the same sentence, in the same verse. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts 2, 22. Yes, ma'am. Ye men of Israel... Hear ye these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Amen. So signs, wonders, and miracles are the same. Anybody ever wonder why all the world wandered after the beast? Again, sir? Anybody ever wondered why all the world wandered after the beast? Signs, miracles, and wonders. Tickle the fancy. Their fancies were tickled, you're right. Their fancies were tickled. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. 
the 24th division in the book of Matthew, and we're reading three verses, verses 23, 24, and 25. Matthew 24, 23, 24, and 25. Amen when you get there. Amen. Please. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, Amen. here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For they shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders in so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. What is this talking about? So false prophets and false Christ shall arise and do great wonders. Spiritualism. Miracles, spiritualism. So it's talking about the deception of spiritualism. And if the people of God deceive the very elect, if the people of God are not rooted in their belief system, they will be swept away with spiritualism also. Are we seeing that? Amen. So I remember there was a song, you used to be song years ago, Watch Your Eyes, Watch Your Eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch your ears, watch your ear. But there's a father up above. Yes. Here's, here's the crazy part. We're not talking about the blatant spiritualism, no, no. We're talking about the spiritualism that we watch on TV or we listen to. And it's every day. We're, not, we're not, not talking about the weird, out of the ordinary ones. We're talking about the everyday spiritualism that we get to participate in. Anybody remember the movie? Gosh. Um, it's, it's a movie with these three sisters. Bewitch. Bewitch. Oh, yeah. Charmed. 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 I used to be fascinated. Charmed. I don't touch by an angel. Couldn't miss me, my girl. Couldn't miss me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that Sir, spiritualism but, becoming normalized? True. Yes. Knowing what I know now, yes. Hmm. Those are... Those are Elder, those are gateway because now they have the bigger and bolder. Now they have a um, show named Lucifer. Uh, I'm showing yes. Lucifer as a good guy. Yes. Yes. You have, a, you have a movie named Spell Children. Interesting. Right. You have another, here's, here's, here's another one. That I'm, I remember the, the old ones from, from in the past. I don't know any of the newer ones now. I hear about them from time to time. What about this one? I, I was walking in, um, in Sovereign, Britain, like, just maybe like this week, maybe Tuesday, Tuesday night, maybe. Could have been Tuesday night. We went to the supermarket. And we're walking out, and on the the the, the, the billboard for the for the this, the cinema there, Doctor Strange. Is, is that is that the name of the thing? Maybe is Doctor Strange? Yeah, it's some of it. Yeah, and the multiverse. Some some. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Marvel. Yeah. Marvel universe. Astral projection. All of those things. Yeah. So, so isn't the the Marvel movies and the, especially this one in particular about magic and sorcery? Isn't that what's being portrayed on screen? That's making a that's making billions of dollars and making waves right around the world. Isn't that spiritualism Absolutely. being brought into your home? Yes, it is. Let me ask you a question. When you put that in, in your home and you sit down beside your family, your, your, child, your child, son, daughter, you think Christ sit down there beside you and watch it? Or you have a different company? Or we not think about it this week? Yeah, invite something else to come and watch it with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
You see, how, I'm not talking about the way off ones that will look weird. I'm talking about the ones that have become normalized. They have become a part of our lives every day. If somebody asks you, if you watch Marvel movie or you watch Doctor Strange, and you say, no, they're going to think you are strange. Am I not right? Well, my family th think I'm strange now because I've cut off a lot of things. So them, them looking at me like I'm an alien. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, absolutely. But Elder. Yes, ma'am. About these um, movies, um, they, 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 they are spiritualism and thing. But don't you think that they are even telling us something deeper? Well, I, I, would, I would agree that they're telling us something because when they want to tell the world what's going on, they put them in their movies. Right. But you know what? We have a more sure word of prophecy. That is true. <clears throat> So we root ourselves in the prophecies. You know, if it's, if it's big news, you'll hear it. You don't have to go watch it yourself. <laughs> True. And, uh, to, to provide an example of one of those movies, <clears throat> um, my babysitter when I was a child, she lives in Montego Bay, and uh, she's an Seventh-day Adventist, right? And her niece, when she was younger that she, i think she's now probably like 17 18 when she was younger very nice young lady very mannerable very pleasant very helpful and she started watching lucifer right started watching lucifer and within no time within let me say no time i mean within no time she said that she's no uh lesbian pierce her nose pierce get tattooed move out of the house and everything that is bad that you can imagine she is now doing in in just by watching that movie because she wasn't like that before she never displayed or demonstrated any of those traits or characteristics but once she started watching that movie and getting engrossed in it everything changed and she became a totally different person so the influences are there especially that movie Absolutely. Here, here's a cra I'm going to give you a crazy statistic, uh, Sister Tanisha, just because of what you just said. Um, I'll find the source and I'll share it eventually. Um, about 20% of the group of people that, that, that we would identify as being Gen Zers, about 20% of them identify as some part in the LGBTQ uh, rainbow. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. 20%. That's one in five. 20, if you put five of them in front of you, chances mm. are one of them. And if That's... they're not all the way there, they are um, doubling in it, so to speak. But then that'd be by, that's still the part of it. 20%. Can you imagine? Because of what we've opened up in our homes and in our hearts, unwittingly, unknowingly, inviting in the devil and his minions to wreak havoc on our families. But even if you don't invite it, Brother Sheldon, um, I was at work. Um, and the football season, so yeah, a couple of the guys who, who watch the football competition, there was an advertisement. And I don't remember what they were, what that was, was about. At the end of it, <laughs> at the end of it, I saw two men kissing on national wait, network television in an advertisement. Two men kissing. I was like, what the? How? Oh, why? <laughs> on national TV in an ad? I mean, you don't have to invite it in. Once you have a TV and you watch TV, you're going to see it, especially American TV. You're going to see it? No. 
that's that's where we find ourselves, family. Um, I'm gonna share another quote. I, I've I've reached page five. We're moving. Yay! <laughs> I see you covering two more. You say you have twenty one, so that's three weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Was this what Sasha, Sasha I said? Yeah, wow. exactly. One hour. Uh, one hour. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You have to continue, Sheldon. I have to continue. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. There you go. I'll have to probably break for next week, though. But I, I, we, we'll figure it out. No worries. Um, all right. I'm going to share this quote. Sure. All right, and I'm, before we start reading, could I have a reader, please? Or let me know who's willing to read. Go ahead and, and uh, let me know. Okay, can you go at it? All right, I appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to give me like a couple of seconds, brief, uh, brief intermission. You can get some water. All right, cool. My brother, I would appreciate if we would continue. Um, before we do, let's let's just um, say another quick word of prayer, shall we? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your blessings. And as we're going through this this topic right now, we ask that you just open our minds, Lord, and help us to understand and to appreciate. We know that this is going to become more and more of a problem for your people and for the entire world. And we ask that you help us to be Rooted, grounded, and prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Are you ready for me to read? Please. Through spiritualism, Satan appears as the benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of the people and professing to present a new and more exalted system of religious faith. But at the same time, he works as a destroyer. His temptations are leading multitudes to ruin. In temperance, the dethrones reasons, sensual indulgence, strife, and bloodshed fill, and bloodshed fill. Satan delights in war, for it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victim, steeped in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another, for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. One, one question. Do we see this happening now with what's going on in Ukraine with Russia? Yes, sir. 
And we see that this, it is his object to incite the nations to war against one another and divert our minds, but also the spiritualistic aspect of it where the healing of the diseases and all these things that are going to happen. And we're going to witness it. And are we going to stand on the word of God or are we going to be swept away in the flood of ungodliness? Please continue. All right. It is fondly supposed that heathen superstitions have disappeared before the civilization of the 20th century. But the word of God and the stern testimony of, of facts declare that sorcery is practiced in this age as verily as in the days of the old time magicians. The ancient system of magic is, in reality, the same as what is now known as modern spiritualism. That's exactly what we've been discussing all along. Satan is finding access to thousands of minds by presenting himself under the guise of departed friends. The scripture declares that the dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5. Their thoughts, their love, their hatred have perished. The dead do not hold communion with the living, but true is this early cunning. Satan employs this device in order to gain control of minds. Isn't that what you did this morning talking about the control of minds? Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. So it's a God's very important word for that us. message. God's mm -hmm. directive, my goodness. So funny how everything is just linked even from the, the Sabbath school lesson, to the divine, and even to know. To God be the glory. Continue. Yes, please. Amen. Through spiritualism, many of the sick, the, bere the bereaved, the curious, are communicating with evil spirits. All who venture to do this are on dangerous ground. The word of truth declares how God regards them. In ancient times, he pronounced a stern judgment on a king who had sent for counsel to a heathen oracle. It is not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire, inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. God doesn't play around with people that play around with these things. Indeed. We have to know the, ma this. the magicians of the heathen times have their counterpart in the super super in the spiritualistic mediums, the clairvoyance and the fortune tellers of today, the mystic voices that spoke at Endor and at Ephesus are still by their lying words misleading the children of men. Could the veil be lifted from before our eyes? We should see evil angels employing all their arts to deceive and to destroy. Wherever an influence is exerted to, the cause to, men, to cause men to forget God, there Satan is exercising his bewitching power. When men yield to, the, to, this, to his influence, Ere they are aware, the mind is bewildered and the soul polluted. Mm. Mercy. The apostles' admonition to the Ephesian church should be heeded by the people of God today. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. This part here is important. Wherever and influence is exerted to cause men to forget God. Satan is there, Satan is exercising his bewitching power. Men yield to the influence, and before they know it, their minds are bewildered and their souls are polluted. Before you realize what happened, once spiritualism starts to kick in, before you know it, you're swept away. Before you know, you're swept away. Our best bet, leave that thing alone. 
as we read in this, the, the, this, the reading a while ago, it says that you're on Satan's ground. That's his ground. Leave it alone. Step away. Anybody have any, any comments, any thoughts on this before we move on? Shalom. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to share a few verses. Um, Matthew 24, verse 3. And he sat upon Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear the wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrow. Amen. Amen. All right. That was exactly where we're in Matthew, but we're looking at further down. But I appreciate it, my brother. All right. So let's, could, could I have another reader? We're still going, we're pressing forward. Um, or anybody wants to, to add anything? Any? Or on a job of sleep on me. No man, we are here. Present. Say in a suey. Well, I can see you, but uh, everybody else look like they've gone to sleep, man. Present. Wonderful. All right. So we're turning our Bibles to the book of Acts. We're gonna look at just a couple of examples of exactly what we're talking about from the scriptures. So we're going to Acts chapter uh, 8. Acts chapter 8. And we're reading verse 9. And we're reading from 9 down to... We're just going to read from 9 down and then we just um, stop at the appropriate place. So we're starting from... Uh, chapter 8 and verse 9. Go ahead, please. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. One second. But when... Right there. So we see that this man was a sorcerer. And he bewitched the people. He bewitched them to the point where they're seeing spiritualism taking place and they're ascribing spiritualism to be the power of God. Why were they doing that? Because they had no conception of who God is. They didn't understand how God works. And so any supernatural manifestation, they ascribe that to being the power of God. Are we seeing the dangers of what we're talking about here? As Sister Angela said, Sister Lowe, that they, the people were handing out flyers and said, miracles, there were miracles. And it's the same Jesus that was crucified on the cross. So once there are miracles, they ascribe it to God. But if we're seeing now sorcerers, witches, warlocks, 
necromancers, all these people have, have been empowered by Satan to do these same things. Please continue. Everybody gonna sleep with me, so we're gonna just go through together. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip, Sister preaching Brown, the thing. I heard Sister Brown a while ago. Let me, let me. Sister Brown, what are you saying? I'm awake. I'm listening. Okay, good. good. <laughs> but when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. One second, one second. You know, there's a lot of backstory in this because we know that these, these people never liked the Samaritans and to see that they are receiving the word of God. Um, should have been a marvel. But anyhow, so this, this man, Simon, believed also and was baptized. Anybody, everybody see that? Yes. He believed and was baptized. Yeah. And he followed them and watched the miracles that were taking place. And he was fascinated by it, but he never really changed. But let's continue reading. So a pagan being baptized. And remain a pagan. paganism. Yes. This is what the papers represent. But we can get into that, but not getting into that. Continue, my sis. Right, verse 14, right? Uh, yeah, I think you read that one. Yes. Right. Also 15. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought, that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy mm. heart is not right in the sight of God. Mm. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Mm. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Amen. We can, and, we okay. Can so, so this man, a sorcerer, wanted to buy the gift of God with money. He was offering to buy the gift of God. He, he was baptized, people. He was baptized. A Christian. Or, uh, that's what I was just going to say. For all intents and purposes, he was a Christian. He believed and, and was baptized. That's what the Bible said. For all intents and purposes, this man was a Christian. Christian. Yes. Children are Christian to the class. For those who take the public transportation and traverse through halfway through <clears throat> When you're there in the mornings, have you ever seen a lady in a white blouse with a black skirt with a white thing tied around her head? Have anybody ever seen her? She's either in front of JN or she's in front of the... I've seen her before. Yes, you, you hear what she said when she's there? I have never really heard what she said. I'm here to meet that God. I'm sure that's... Oh, not that one. There's okay. another one. Oh, I don't know. That. I don't know the other one then. All right. So she's there saying, healing, touch... Healing touch, <clears throat> come and save, you know, I'm healing you know, with a touch. So she is doing the same thing that Simon did. She's selling healing. So she's saying that I can touch you and heal you. So one morning she came to me and she said, Miss, 
want to touch. <laughs> and I turned to her because there was a there was a madman in front of me. I think he's mad. There was an old man in front of me and I gave him some money. I said, see a man there, touch him and healing and then come back and talk to me. And she said, I touch him already. I said, but him not heal yet. So go and go heal him and see him and the people that I see. And then we can talk. And she said, no man, are you more and touch me? I said, ladies, go and go touch the madman. As a matter of fact, COVID are gone. Go look for all the people with COVID and touch all of them. Every morning she see me, she come to me, miss, miss a touch. And I told myself I would never answer her. Never, I don't turn and look at her and I don't answer. Cause I know the devil I try to get me to step outside of the, you know what I mean? But she trust me. Time, she want to be with you. So, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Crazy. If, if anybody what? has to pass there like 6.30 between, no, yeah, between 6.30 and about 7, 8, you will see her there. Almost every morning, either in front of JN or in front of the transport center. And people do it, you know. One day, I see a rope on lady. I say, What's your rope on the lady? <laughs> she loves it. We can do that. A witch I that. Oh, boy. No wonder. Because. What do we say? What do we say? Ah. Oh. The more you think about it, you just realize that if we're not careful, the devil has something prepared for us. It's only the spirit and the power of God that's preserving us. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All right. So let's look at another one from the Bible. Uh, this is the one that, that we talked about before. First Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28. And uh, we're going to read from about verse 5. I mean, it would be good to start from 1, just in the interest of time. No, let's start from 1. Let's start from 1. Could you repeat that, please? Sorry, I missed it. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Okay. 28. 28, I apologize. 1 Samuel 28, starting from the, the, the beginning of the chapter. Please. You said the third chapter? 20. No, you're being, yeah, 20, but verse. you're being at what verse? One. Three. No, oh, one. Okay. Let's start from one. Let's start from one. Okay, and it reads, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistine gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, No, thou as surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and then and thy men. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city, and Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So one second here, my brother. So the Philistines, so just to, the Philistines were looking to war with the people of God, Israel. And here we're seeing uh, David was running away and he was in with the Philistines and they were asking him to go to war against his people. And Samuel, who was the prophet at the time, died. And so Saul, who was the king, was pretty much left on his own. But what he had done before was that he put away all those with family spirits and all the wizards. So he get rid of witchcraft, spiritualism. Next, he got rid of all of those people out of the land. And so now we're in verse 4. So just that's the back, backdrop. So let's continue um, diving in some more. All right. And the Philistine gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim, nor by prophets, 
Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. So one second, my brother. So Saul went to God and didn't get any answers from God. And so he might take it of himself. And now he might go to Satan for answer. Satan now said no, you know. He might go get answer, man. Yes. But remember, he got rid of all the wizards and the familiar spirit people. And so he had to go to one that was some distance away because out of his land, they were all removed. Continue. And Saul disguised himself and put on another raiment, put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me up, bring him up, bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, behold, thou knowest what Saul had done. For we had cut off those that have familiar spirit and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up, Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God ascending out of the earth. Continue. Where were these gods coming from? Out of the earth. Interesting, eh? Continue. That's a symbol, right? No, just, just, just think about it. Every good gift comes from above. The thing comes from. Amen. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Everything that Brother comes from earth is devilish and sent to us. Amen. Brother, Gar Brother Garden. <laughs> yes, sir. That sounds like Ola Fagan. Happy Sabbath, man. Blessings. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm curious. Um. Saul, shouldn't he have known the doctrine of the state of the dead? I, I would assume so, yes. So, so the point is then, how, how does he move from one of light to one of darkness down into trying, uh, in a sense, seeking to find light? Remember, remember at this time, the spirit was gradually leaving him because of the hardness of his heart. Right. So it's like where Christ said that, um, walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. Amen. And there's a quotation that says, when he step off the platform, mm -hmm. darkness follows. Yeah, so there's a quotation that says, when he step off the platform, darkness follows. But there's nothing else to step in other than darkness. Mm -hmm. As the platform is the light. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And this is Ella. To, to, to Saul. Ella. Yeah, man, I hear you. Happy Sabbath again. Blessings. You know, I asked a, a question in the chat. And I was really considering it. I, I, didn't, it see, I didn't see that question. I'm sorry. The question, the question is, why did Saul had to ask for a woman that has familiar spirit? Uh, why not a man? And I was there, and I'm here contemplating and running it through my head and things. As like I said, I, don't, I haven't studied, studied it out. But you realize that in terms of the principle, right? A woman in Bible prophecy, I'm not saying that's our situation is a prophecy, but a woman in Bible prophecy symbolizes a church. And it is through but, the churches today that spiritism is promoted. Brother Marvin. Yes, Ella. Brother Marvin, sir, it is, it is a type. It is a, it's an example. So, so in, in essence, when you, when you step away from the God of Israel, a one direction you can hit on towards the papacy. The papacy, and, it, and in other words, remember, you know, the state of the dead, as uh, um, spiritualism thing, is right. promoted and pushed by this predominantly the Sunday keeping churches. Yes, so you see, so your head towards sun worship. But we, we, 
remember, we, right, remember we, we established that before. Remember the two pillars of, of Catholicism is the state of the dead. And, and, and Sunday worship. Yeah. Solid, yeah. man. Solid, yeah. solid, yeah. solid, yeah. solid. Yeah. The, soul, the soul and Sunday sacredness. Which you cover yes, before. man. Yes. Yes. But, yes. But, but then remember, you know, um, all these, what, what did Kenny, uh, Ella Williams share? Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 6, that they were replenished from the East. Eastern mysticism. Where does me Eastern mysticism lead you to? Sun worship. Wow. But say this thing is beautiful. Yeah, man. Eastern mysticism is spiritualism. And that leads you to worship the sun that rises in the East. So if you can ask a question, brother God. Yes. Why did he have to put on a different garment to visit the lady? <laughs> because she wouldn't want what? to see him. Because he, he, he was... Why wasn't... Why wasn't he wearing the robe of Christ's righteousness? Why did he have to change that robe? Because you can't go, you, you, you can't make up your mind to go on Satan's ground with the robe of Christ's righteousness. You he lost it. Vision. I believe he lost it. Well, that is true too. Mm -hmm. That is true too. Remember, it's the spirit at this point was leaving him. Remember, this is at the end of his life pretty much because he would have died in this said battle. So this was pretty much the end of his life. And this was just like the final straw that wiped him out. And my question, yes. um, in verse 10, uh, which, which law do you swear by? I, I, I'm going to say, Sister Normally, like, let me put it this way. My mom would always say to me that Mount Cut Cross we are make for talk. So he can't say anything he feels like saying and swear by any God he feels like swearing by. True, true, true. Brother Gordon. Yes, sir. I know I'm the one reading, but um, in verse in verse 12, when she said, why have thou um, deceived me for thou art Saul? Um, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here, even going into verse 13. All right. So remember, Saul had... Um, from earlier, Saul had, in verse 5 or 6, Saul had gotten rid of all the familiar spirits out of the land of Egypt. So he was, he was killing those people if they didn't leave. And so she knew that he was against familiar spirits or people with familiar spirits. And he came to her, but if he had showed himself, she wouldn't have worked with him. So remember it said in verse, let me find the verse. Um, in verse 8 it says he disguised himself so she never knew that it was him if she knew that it was him she wouldn't work with him because she knew that he, would, he wanted to kill her you get it? yes yes and is it that she figured it out that it was him in yeah, verse when he 12 asked Samuel, when he asked Samuel he gave himself away oh brother Gordon yes sir <laughs> How, how do we tie this experience in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 11? What is this? How do we tie this experience? Yeah. In the 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. But Madam, Madam Marvin, just answer it with a type. Yeah, I mean... No, man, I'm talking about how do we see it now, today? The, 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 as a matter of fact, in the elder, that's what we've been covering from last night. Talking about okay. modern spiritualism versus ancient spirit, spiritualism. So, we would have covered this extensively. We're looking at what's going on now. We talked about the movies, we talked about what's going on in the church, talked about the healing and the okay. All those okay. different physical manifestations that are going on today that's capturing mm -hmm. the minds of people. The, you but, but I'm thinking. I'm thinking in terms of, of. I'm thinking specifically in terms of Saul's role as a lead, as a leader of Israel. That's where. That's where my my headspace is. Oh, you're talking about the, the, the Freemasonry and the Lodge and those things. Directly in our church, in in the center of the church, in, as in really as a church. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of these these leaders are are large men. They're Freemasons.
This is this is known. Uh, Brother Gordon. Yes. How is it possible? How is it possible that these um these men are, are, are Freemason or lodgemen and they they high up in position? It's 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 simple. In their mind, uh, being a large member is an a spiritual thing, meaning it has nothing to do with their spiritual life and their spiritual walk. That is at least what they're trying to tell themselves. They're trying to make a distinction, but there is no distinction. So, so we sit and we listen. <laughs> we actually listen to the word of God from these people. That's, that's what it does. Sis, that's why they don't give the word of God. They give one verse and then talk the rest of the sermon. Exactly, because they, they won't go through the Bible scripture by scripture, line upon line with you. No. They won't find that. You're not going to find that. Have mercy. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge that we're having right now. All right. Brother Michael. This is he. Nelson, L. Nelson, go ahead. And then uh, you can read after that, Michael. Yeah, I was say, saying that in terms of these secret societies, the brotherhood is more important than the doctrines or the teachings of the Bible. But there's no other way to justify it. It must be that way. And what they do, they work they work themselves to, in becoming um, an integral part and the top, the top in the organization, and they so streamline and bring in their clones, their clones afterwards, and and promote them. So they are become they become people of influence in the church. Mm -hmm. They work right, they will, they will right up to the top, and then bring and then bring in their friends. And yeah. By the time you know it, the, the church is flooded with these people. Yeah. And become a totally different organization promoting something totally different from Christ. And we see it in the politics as it is played out in the church as well. Of course. Of course. Right? All right. Please. Please. All right. And we're at um yeah, we're at verse 14. Yes. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed before, with, bowed himself. So what, one second there. In verse 14, it says, what did it say? What form is he of? And the old man said, uh, he's an old man. But because Saul was so desperate to see Samuel, he perceived that it was Samuel. She never told him that it was Samuel. She said, I'm an old man. But that, but that gone. Yes, man. I'm seeing something in this, you see? Um, because Samuel perceived that it was Samuel, not you? So, yes. Right, so, so doesn't that link to where the Bible talk about them receiving strong delusion that they should believe a lie because they love not the truth. Amen. 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 What a strong and powerful link. Yes. He was desperate. And so God, he, he got what he was looking for. He didn't love the truth. He turned away. God, he went to God. God didn't answer him. So he went to the devil and he got what he was looking for. Let's continue. Uh, Brother Gordon, um, just back to verse 13. Prince here. Yes, Brother Prince. Um, uh, relating to what we had been saying, what, what I had been saying, said before uh, regarding the, the dead and how they perceive the dead and ancestral worship. This lady said that she saw gods coming out of the earth, not dead people. Not dead people. She saw gods. Amen. Or demons. Amen. There's a lot of twist to that, you know, because uh, there, in, in, in these, in these um, Western and African um, cultures, they venerate the, the dead as being divine. 
and see them also as gods. As remember, the God in you is that spirit which, which goes to other places when you die. You move on to a higher sphere, you become, you become God. So in their teachings, it, it, is, it, it can be the, 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 the dead person or the, the, the so-called spirit. Yeah, but we, 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 know, we, we know better that is the demons. We know, we know that it is fallen angel. <laughs> yes, man. We know, we know that is demons. That's the truth about it. All right. Amen, amen. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed for the Philistine make war against me and God is departed from me and answer it me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become thine enemy? And the Lord had done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord had rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. We can, I think we can stop here. I mean, it just No, up. Ellen, hold on. Something important. We can just say something. Go on. <laughs> The Lord has become um, become um, um, Saul's enemy. Inadvertently, what has um, Saul joined himself to? Idols. He had joined himself in becoming also, he joined himself unto the enemies of God. Mm -hmm. That is what he has actually done to. 100%. Wow. Yes, man. So when the spirit of God leave you by default, you're going to join the ranks of the enemy. But then remember, if the spirit of God leave, the other spirit of God take over. Plain and simple. Just very straightforward. Sir, you know, one of my deacons um, at church where I'm coming from would say one minute late for heaven. It's just in time for hell. <laughs> Absolutely. One minute. Absolutely. Maybe too long at that point. But Absolutely. what is being said there, there's no two ways about the thing right now. Because if 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 um as was Samuel would say to him, then if God leave you, what have you come to me? <laughs> Where you come to me for? What <laughs> what if you do for you? What if you do for you? Brother Shellan. Yes, sir. Oh my God. So Israel was going into battle, right? So Saul so want information, want to know if I'm going to win the war. So I want to um, contact God for God um, tell him if I'm going to be successful in the war. If you were going to war. Mm -hmm. So because San, Samuel passed away, he could not have no profit to tell him if he would be victorious. So he went to the witch to see if she could have bring up Samuel so he could have get some answer, right? Yes. So, so you see, without the without the prophet, prophet, the people perish. So him go to um, him go to evil source, you know. So absolutely, my brother. Yeah. Well, Elder, <laughs> something important again. I hope I don't get into trouble by saying this too, but may I say it nonetheless? He went. Saul went to the enemy. He went to the witch of Endor. In other words, he went to find out how he must, if, if his battle is going to be successful and whether or not he should go to battle. Similarly, in our time, we find in Adventism that we are going to the evangelicals to find out how we should do evangelism. Mm -mm. Willow Creek. So we go to TD Jakes and all of these persons. Something wrong, man. Hmm. Hmm. At our various um, universities, it is these men's teachings and influence. But Elder, that is used as a manual. 
So Elder talk about going on in a full campsite within a St. Catherine. Yeah. Now the same um, purpose-driven life and purpose-driven book them use as, as, as the man who are Sunday, us I'm bringing Sunday pastor to teach the man them how to pray down there, the pastor them how to pray. Oh my, it's a sad situation though. That, this how, in a Jamaica, this down a St. Catherine we are talking about right on the road. Brother yeah. Gordon. Yes. Brother Gordon, I, sir, I'm going to ask you to stop spreading rumors for the bridge in there. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody was dear. Serious thing? Dear. A member of wow. our ministry was dear. Lord of mercy. He was dear in life and living color. Oh, we teach, him, we teach him how to pray. So, and, and 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 so, I didn't, so I didn't ever read the book on prayer from Sister White. Oh, and, and nearly one warned you earlier, you know, Ella. Where he teach me how to pray. <laughs> and nearly one warned you, we don't take kindly when the thing comes in. Oh, Daddy, take it and break it back. Rep repeat, Ella Sylvester, go no, ahead. I, I, I said, I, I nearly <laughs> warned you earlier, we don't take too kindly when it comes home. We mm -hmm. like to speak from what happens at a distance, but we don't like when it comes home, you hear that you're criticizing the church. Mm -hmm. You know? But um, the, fact, the fact of the matter is that this, this has been a long history. Um, and we have been very good at, you know, not bringing it to the fore. But the fact of the matter is that um, sometimes, even among present truth version, they don't like when this stuff is highlighted. But... Um, you, you just need to, I mean, some of the stuff that has been coming out, especially some of what you mentioned earlier, I, I, I can appreciate if people, you know, find it intolerable. I really do. Of course. Th that's the last thing you want to hear. Why would you want to hear that? But not because you don't want to hear it doesn't mean it's not the truth. Your desire or lack thereof for the truth does not change it from being the truth. So who, who wrote that book, um, Shalom, Purpose Driven Love? Bill Hybels. Rick who? Warren. Rick yes, Warren. Rick Warren. Yes, Rick yes, Warren. Rick Warren. Bill Hybels is a student of Rick Warren, right? Yeah, Bill Hybels do, is the Willow teacher. Creek. Bill Hybels is the teacher of Rick Warren. Yeah, right. he's, the Willow, he's the one at Willow Creek. Yes. But I think they also have the purpose of the right, church. You know, so? Purpose of life and purpose of the church. Yes. 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 Those two books, those two books were heavily promoted in the Portmore, Portmore region in some time. They were just lavishing it upon the churches. Recurring the one where it said, um, uh, William Miller, no, no, man. no, 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 it, it not have nothing to do with William Miller. Yeah, they mentioned nothing no, about no, it. No, I just I try to figure out who required. I don't know who required it. Forgive my ignorance. You see him face all the time, you know, because as a matter of fact, when um, Obama, he was a, Obama is the inauguration he did the prior. Never watched yes. that. So many know. And he wasn't he a part of this the counts that Trump put together too? Yes. Yes, he's a part of that as well. He, he was a part of the counts that Trump put together too. Google works. I know requirements. <laughs> Google works. Google works. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um, could I have a read up of this quick uh, quotation here? All right. Go to God for yourselves. Pray for divine enlightenment that you may know that you do know what is truth. That when the wonderful miracle working power shall be displayed and the enemy shall come as an angel of light, you may distinguish between the genuine work of God and the Im imitative work of the powers of darkness. Only God can help you. Only, only God. We have to be praying for this. Brother Gordon. Yes, sir. All right, now, 
the Bible tells us that he that turned his way from the law, even his prayer shall become an abomination, right? Yes. Right? Yes, yes. In, in Proverbs. And so you have somebody who has turned their, their was why elder the connection with, with you're not coming through so clear unfortunately no not not connection poor it's distorted still not You know, Helda, you know, Helda, a couple couple of years ago, my 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 personal doctor gave me the 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 Rick Warren book, The Purpose Driven Life as a birthday gift. And I read it and I was impressed with it for a few years. And then for the life of me. I lent it out to someone and I didn't get it back. And you know, say, I, I, if, if you ask me now, what was it all about? I don't remember. Well, maybe that's God saving you. Amen. You never did have it in the first place. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have mine here, you know, but I can't Where's put it? my finger on it. Where's the elder? I have it, man. I, I, I received one from that promotion in Portmore, man. Where are you talking about? Let me know, must can use it for make reference and show where them think. <laughs> and uh, I live a purpose driven life. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, now believe me, for about two years I was thinking about it. Then when I lent it to someone and the person didn't give me back. After a few years after that, somebody asked me what it was all about. Hear me? Uh God. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> You're, 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 you're like, maybe you can say when I wake up on my dream, the thing is gone from me. Nowhere to be found. Gone. So true, so true. Good. All right. Um, I want to wrap up. I have nine minutes. I've made it to page 10, everybody. And I feel. Yeah, like run from the three weeks, see, man. I'm, you, I could have, you could have made it, made it to page 20. You still go have another week. <laughs> I think I'm doing well. Right. So we're going to look at, let me tell you, um, just, just so you know, one scripture. So we're going to do two passages, passages of scripture and one, and one uh, uh, quotation from the pen of inspiration, and then we wrap up. Right, so could somebody just read Acts chapter 13 for me? This is going to take us on to page 11. So we'll have 10 more pages to go. What verse? Four. From four to 12. Okay. And it reads, So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they parted unto Seleucia. And from thence they said, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the, the, the Isle unto Pythia. Huh? Unto what? The Isle, Isle, Island, Isle. Yeah. They had gone through the Isle unto to Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country of the country, Sergius Paulus, and a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation which stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety. Subtlety. Oh. 
that word. And all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Mm. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Mm. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Amen. So what we're seeing here is that there was a sorcerer, a what? A false prophet. He was also a Jew, meaning this was not someone that was outside of the church. What did he do? He withstood them from turning the deputy to the faith. He was stopping. And we have to understand when we allow these false prophets and these sorcerers, spiritualism to get into our midst and into our life, its sole purpose is to withstand the word of God. Brother Gordon. Yes, sir. You're back. Can you hear oh. me now? Yes, I can hear you. Right. Yeah, I'm back. So, so yeah, so can, I can just jump on right to what you, you mentioned just now. So I was saying that it's when not. you bring somebody, because the Bible said that um that when we turn away our, 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 away from the law of God, that even our prayer become an abomination. So I'm saying when you bring somebody who outrightly reject the Sabbath to teach God's people to pray, is like you're ensuring that when they pray, the prayers become an abomination. You're turning them away from God too. Yeah. In verse 10, what did what did he say? They are the enemy, though enemy of all righteousness. And so we have to be careful. We have to be care very, very careful. Anybody have anything? Elder. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> May I back up a little bit? Just, just, uh, just indulge me a second. All right. I went ahead and I, I went and looked for the book and I found one of them, The Purpose, Purpose Driven Life. And I just want to read something from it, which I've highlighted. It's, it says... Try praising God without, you, without using the words praise, hallelujah, thanks, or amen. Instead, saying, we just want to praise you. Make a list of synonyms and use fresh words like admire, respect, value, honor, and appreciate. I just found that part very interesting. So, what is that all about? I would love to read the, Listen, the purpose, <laughs> Rick Warren, the purpose driven life. Yeah, I get, I know, but, but I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make sense of that. You know, I try. It sounds like it can lead you away from God, not towards God. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> synonyms that you use for men when you're, when you're. Um, saying good things about men and those sin the same synonyms that you use as opposed to praise and hallelujah and, and all of that. It's, it's bringing God down to the level of the common. The level of, yeah. So I like you want to use dictionary, man. It, it, it is a good, it, I believe, it, it, well, not now still, but sometimes, you know, because we don't want to appear like we're total biases when we make mention of certain things we should actually show where they are off uh, so that is the purpose of having the book you can actually quote from it mm -hmm. yeah that, that just sounded a little bit strange a while ago that is the first one there are many others but that one just jump out at me it was very very so just but anyway it's funny when i think about it um i remember as he said that a while ago, I remember the, the sacrifices that um, Cain and Abel made and God took one and um, dispelled with the other. And I believe we have a God that is specific in terms of what he wants. Mm -hmm. Very particular. So when we go and say, all right, hey, God, this is how I'm going to call you. This is how, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Then I believe we can run in trouble in that way. But, but Brother Michael, you hear what you say, this is what I'm going to do. It's more about you than about God. Indeed, indeed. And not heed into what he requires. Amen. It's more about you. 
right? Let me I want to share this with you. I have a reader for this quick quotation here. I'm on it. Thanks. The Bible will never be superseded by miraculous manifestations. Amen. Everybody the should stop and say amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yes, ma'am. The truth up. must be studied. It must be searched for has hidden treasure. Wonderful illuminations will not be given aside from the word or to take the place of it. Mm -hmm. Cling to the word, receive the engrafted word, which will make men wise unto salvation. So no wonderful illuminations, no miraculous manifestations are going to replace the word of God. Simply thus say the Lord. Make we get that in our minds. Just, just concretize that. Take some time to, 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 to let that one sink in. Right? Sister Kane, see your hand raised. That represents time and your time is up. All right. So I have one more passage of scripture and then I'll close up this part here. So um, please permit me just to have this one read. Your time is <laughs> See? So <laughs> you're not allowing me to, 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 to read the scripture? When you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final, final uh, scripture. And, um, and then wrap it up here. Acts chapter 16 and reading from 16 down to 24. Could I have a reader for that one? We don't have a lot of time. So if somebody could just jump on that one first, please. Um, he said Acts chapter 16, verse 1? 16. Oh, 16, 16. All right. And it came to pass, as you went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turn and said to the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and to, and he came out of the same hour at out the same hour and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone they caught paul and silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying these men being jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitudes rose up together against them, and the, magist the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the socks, in the stocks. All right, my brother. So here we see another act of spiritualism now, but this one is for money. Anybody ever seen the men? So we're gonna pray for your healing, but you have to pay for it first. Anybody ever heard anything like that before? And, and similar to a sister Tan, no man wanna be with sister Tan. So she have a prayer for the healing touch. Come on, just the downtown, just the downtown, um, what a street name, right in the middle of all the buses park. I don't remember the name of the area, Big Tree. The Big it's Tree. The, right, a Big Tree downtown. You always have some service spot. What kind of people them be? But them always have poker music or if you want to call it gospel music, you can, but to me it sounds like poker music. And I'm always a pray for people, and people always are giving them money right in the middle of downtown. So, yeah, it happened now, today, in our little country. Yeah. Paying for it. 
And so we're seeing these things. All right. Um, so the next time we uh, look at this topic by God's grace, we're going to the prophetic side of things. We have just laid it the groundwork. We're going into the prophetic side of things the next time. And uh, of course, um, we have about nine, 10 pages to go. But I think um, what we have covered so far has been wonderful. I hope you were blessed. I learned from this study as well. And based on where we're at, just for us to, 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 to guard our hearts with all diligence. For truthfully from it flows the issues of life. So we're going to end off here. Amen. Amen. We're going to close off right here. And uh, if we may, I'll ask Sister Tanisha to pray to close out this, this Bible study segment. Well, hopefully you don't hear the music in the background. A neighbor feel like we are new sons today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I give you thanks, Lord, for the communion of your Holy Spirit with us today, teaching us what is spiritualism and how to identify it. And also, Father, to safeguard ourselves against such things by the studying of your word, by hiding your word in our hearts, in our minds, in our conscious and subconscious mind, so that if these things should come upon us, Father, we have the truth with which we can fall on. Father, I pray that we continue to study your word. We continue to learn of you. We continue to learn what is true. And not just to learn it, Lord, but to live it. I pray, Lord, that we continue to abide in your word each and every day. That your Holy Spirit continue to be with us, to guide us, protect us, and teach us that which is true. Bless each and every brethren here. Father, help us to, to look to you and you alone for all that we need, desire, and want in our everyday lives. Continue to lead us on the path of righteousness, salvation, and eternal life. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Sister Sashoy, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, we're coming to a close in our program. And I just want to thank Elder Gordon for sharing with us such a very heavy topic. And I am sure, well, I have learned, and I'm sure the Virgin have also learned. Um, it's now for us to go and um, apply to our lives and unlearn, you know. So I just want to continue with our program, but before I do so, I want to thank um, Brother Tanner for joining us this evening again um, for Bible class. Welcome, Brother Tanner. Um, thank you for welcoming me. Yes. How, um, how are you? I'm very good. And you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Very well. Good. Okay. Yes, that was uh, very interesting. This is my second time uh, listening to you guys, but um, I love all the questions and everything that everybody has to say. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to come back. I look forward to next, uh, next Saturday. All right, so we're going to continue with um, the prior request. And the closing act by Sister Lee. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath. Uh, before I go into the prayer request, I just want to begin the closing act by saying thank you to all those who participated. Sister Sashoy for filling in at such short notice. Brother Jean did the prayer request and the intercessory prayer this morning. Sister Tamara Wallace, inspiration, scripture reading by Sister Chantal, Brother Keneal Williamson for the health focus. Wow. Another installment in that very interesting topic, turning off cancer. 
I look forward to the others that he has to share with us. Uh, Elder Schooler for the Sabbath School Lesson Study, uh, Sister Bridge that did the fellowship, the children, as usual, they were very good with the children's focus. Sister Lowe did the, part, the, the, the pastoral prayer. And uh, Sister Ruffin, the introduction. Our speaker today was Brother Michael Allen. And Brother Michael, well done. I thank the Lord that he has sent you with such a timely message for us. Uh, Sister Brown did the, the benediction and we just had Elder Gordon with another installation in the, another, in the study of spiritualism, looking at spiritualism, such an interesting topic and, you know, it takes us into so many areas. Sister Sasha um, for the meditation song, sis. Excuse okay. me? Sister Sasha did the meditation song. Oh, song Sister Sasha, I yes. am so <laughs> And the meditation song, that was so well done, sis. Very well done, yes. So uh, now I will get into the prayer requests. And we have a, we have a very long list. Please forgive me, my, my internet is, is not stable. I can't use my computer, it is in and out. So I have to use my phone. It, is, it has been in and out, in and out. So um, I hope I'm being heard well, right? Love Go on, is here. Love Love and Lovely, so we have a very extensive list and we keep adding every time we meet. So let me ask if there are any prayer requests that we should add at this time. I want to kickstart, Sister Lee, with two testimonies. Yes. That I am still jumping up and down about. I don't talk to one other person, but I spoke with one yesterday evening. We have Sister Kane oh, Brown, okay. somebody that I had invited. Um, we were praying about her daughter and her granddaughter, but her granddaughter was in a very troubled spot. The daughter is about maybe eight, no, not eight, probably about 10 or 12, they're about. Was giving the Sabbath truth a bit of a hitch in terms of where her mother is concerned and thing. But she's now, both of them, granddaughter and daughter, are at church, mainstream, and they are participating in activities. I could keep my heel yesterday evening. And Paula Mitchell, we have her on the old list. She had asked for prayer pertaining to going for a foot surgery. She went, did her surgery, and now she's recuperating like you, learning to walk like you, taking her time to come around. And she's telling me that day by day, the Lord is really strengthening the foot. Strengthening her actually or the ankle once um some while back coming from work. Co prior to COVID, she lost her job. She was at home and being there, she's now um going in for to to put the case of the, the, the foot injury as a maybe like a, a court case setting because the, the workplace refused to accept it. So she's getting through it that as well. She did her, her um her surgery and she's recuperating so those are the two testimonies that i have to share to god be the glory Well, Marvin,
Pero Marvel. Yes, 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 here am I. Can you stop the YouTube recording, please? I prefer not to call the names of people on uh, live. Because not everybody knows about everybody, and some people who I know do watch this who know yeah. some people. So. Okay, we'll do so.